uh, feel an emotion, right? We don't have other, you know, other TV stations devo- devoted to a emotion, an emotion, right? Like uh, no, there's no, well, there's, you know, Lifetime, the all crying channel, but right, there's right, not right, like right, right. There's not a lot of other ones. So uh, I just think people are realizing the power of humor and the power of um, your mindset. And, and certainly cancer is not something to make fun of. But when I t- tell people about using humor in stressful situations, I talk about don't, you're not talking about making fun of the situation, but the things around it. You know, right now we're going through some stressful times with the COVID stuff. We can't make fun of that. That's a very serious thing. But you can have some fun with, you know, what are we eating? How are, you know, living with the same person 24-7 for months? You know, you can have some fun with the, the subjects around it. You don't really quite, quite want to make fun of that. That's right. And I and I think that's it, right? We, I was talking earlier today about it's it's truly the way that you look at things. You have a choice. God gave us free will and you can either be bitter or better. Mm-hmm. And so if you, you can either find the horrible part of a situation or you can find the funny part of the situation and you wonder like how much better would our country be as a whole if we all started to find the funny as well, opposed absolutely. to horrible, I think it would make a big difference. We, we took my, uh, my sister was going through breast cancer years ago and we took her to the hospital and you know, I figured out the system in the emergency room. The person who's bleeding gets to the top of the list, right? <laughs> my sister's not at the top. My sister's at the bottom. So I turned her and said, you know, Debbie, I got to cut you. <laughs> we are never going to get out of this situation. <laughs> so we had a lot of humor around the situation of sitting there, you know? That's right. So um, That's that, right. you find the humor. And, and you're right. What you focus on uh, can really help or hurt you. And right. if you can focus on, and there are days you're down, but there are days that you can Look at the funny things that it's doing, doing to you and, and, you know, the funny situations you find yourself in and just, and at least give yourself a mental break for a minute, you know, just a minute. That's right. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I I would rather sit and laugh than to cry at a lifetime show because I, I just think you can, you're right. It just, it brings your spirits up. You just, you know, I'll tell you, I feel the best after one of those sit down, belly laugh, tears in the eyes, stomach hurts. You know, uh-huh. that you just, it just makes you feel better. It it just makes you feel better. And it changes the whole energy in the room. I mean, it yes. just changes the energy, Um, you know, diffuses tension. I mean, it connects you to others. It's a great way to connect with people. Uh, you want to use a little, and, and when you're going through serious situations such as cancer and stuff, it's a nice way to put people at ease. I mean, people sometimes don't know how to be around you or what, ha- have some fun with it. It puts people at ease. That's right. I think so too. So are there any rules to like using humor? Like if <laughs> just an individual, is there something I should or shouldn't do? First of all, I always tell people do the humor you think is funny. If you think uh, knock, knock jokes are funny, have fun with that because you'll sell it better. You'll have fun saying it. You'll have fun doing it. You know, uh, first some kind of in comedy clubs, there's really no rules except be funny. But if you're going to use it out in public or you're going to use it in corporate situations or with others, you know, a couple things, um, only make fun of a group you are a member of. If you're bald, you can have fun with bald people. If you're overweight, you can have fun with overweight. Don't do it if you're not, you know, <laughs> it's right, just, right, right. you know, it's just, um, uh, you're not a member of that group. So don't, don't do that. Uh, watch the obvious jokes, you know, people have heard it a million times. Like I did a show for uh, 500 blind merchants. I was the only sighted person in the room. And they actually had in my, you know, I get on stage, I'm a comedian. Of course, the first thing I want to say is, hey, I'm naked. <laughs> Don't do that. All right? That's not good. That's not good. Uh, but they had in my contract, no blind jokes, because they said, Jan, we have heard every blind joke you can say. And they had a great sense of humor, but they've heard it. You know, I did a show for postal workers and all my friends were like, oh, going postal. I said, no, these people have lived through it. They've mm. heard every postal joke. So watch the sort of, you know, stuff that's just going to. Uh, has been done and rehashed, you know, um, people don't want to hear it and they get, they kind of glaze over. <laughs> well, and so speaking of glazed over, like what happens? Cause I know myself, like I've been on stage and there are times where I feel like I'm losing them, like you're losing your audience. So what do you do to bring them back? What do you do to re-engage? And has there ever been an audience where like you couldn't, like you got off and you're like, well, that was just a flop. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything <laughs> right in that set. Good. Yeah, 25 years, Kim, there's been a few audiences. <laughs> you know, first of all, I think, I think we get in our head too much. Uh, you know, I for me, I found that the the beginning when I start out and I'm joking around and stuff, 
and I l- kind of get a gauge on how the audience is. Some people laughing, killer laugh. You know, I think the healthcare group you and I were at was just fun. Some groups are not. And like I've done, have you ever tried to make a CPA laugh? You know, <laughs> they are a little me. different. I've been in front of 500 CPAs. And if you walked in, you would have thought I was not doing well, but I was. And I ended up booking some work off of it only because people laugh differently. People are different. So don't get in your head. If some, if you're trying to use a little bit of humor and people don't laugh, that may be the way they are. You do it for yourself. Have fun. I, I just try to stay in my own bubble, respond to the, how the audience is, is, or the person you're talking to, you know, but don't start thinking, you know, that little voice in your head. Oh, they, I shouldn't have said that joke. Oh, I shouldn't do that. We start to trip ourselves up, have some fun with it and, and enjoy it. And like I said, do the stuff that you think is funny. Don't let other people bring you down. If you say something that you think is funny, just, uh, I've, I've learned, and this has taken some time. Um, humor is a muscle. You have to practice a little bit. You can't just decide you want to do it. Um, you know, practice, start looking for it now and have some fun with it and don't get in your head. Um, so what people don't respond the way you, you wanted them to, um, as long as you're not being offensive and not, um, insulting, you know, you're, you, you're fine. You're, most people appreciate that you're trying to lighten the situation They're They don't, um, uh, get mad that you're trying to use humor. They appreciate that you're okay. You know, you're trying to have some fun with it. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about something not hitting the way you want it to. So why is it? So, I mean, it, I mean, I've seen comedians all, all over. Uh, and again, I love the work that you do, but why choose clean comedy? And I, and I think it's amazing. I'm really glad that you, because I think the world is, you know, it's too negative and you don't need to use nasty four letter words to get your point across. But what right. made you come up with the whole thing that you were just going to do clean comedy? Well, uh, you know, it's kind of the way I write. Um, I just, and I tell comedians starting out, you know, write clean. And then if that, the way you speak is with a lot of cuss words, you got to be true to yourself. I mean, Eddie Murphy, people like that, that's the way they, they're, they're going to speak. And you're not going to come across as authentic. You won't work the places I work. Um, I just decided I didn't want to be graphic and crude because I wanted my family and friends to be able to sit there and not be embarrassed. You know, um, you can have a suggestive joke. People get it, you know, get it in your, their head, make the connection in your head. You don't have to be graphic and spell things out. Um, but for me, I just, I just thought clean, it, it's harder to write clean because you really have to find the punchline. And I just wanted to, um, you know, have people proud of, um, watching me and enjoy it and not be uncomfortable. And that's the way I, it's more the way I write and speak anyway. So, I mean, I do cuss once in a while. You know, I stubbed my toe the other day. I, I cussed. <laughs> We're glad this mic was not on, okay? <laughs> and do people come up to you and say, you know, now that they know that you're a comedian, do they come up to you and say, say something funny? Do, do people ever yes. approach you like that? Yes, yes. And, you know, <laughs> it's so nice uh, talking to you. Uh, because I've done hundreds of radio interviews. And when the DJ puts you on the spot and goes, so, you're a comedian. Tell us a joke. Like, really, you just ruined the entire setup, <laughs> you know, instead, why don't you just ask me a uh, general um, subject and I'll jump in with some material, you know, but right. um, so it is, a, it is a little different. This is the only place out here, California, uh, LA is about the only place when the, you say you're a comedian, they really kind of, oh, really? Like, what other job do you have? Because they don't, <laughs> they don't think you can make a living at it. Um Everywhere else in the country, they think it's cool, but here they're just like, oh, okay, well, so you're a comedian. Big deal. Everyone's a comedian. <laughs> right, 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 especially in California. Yeah. So we only have a couple minutes left, so tell people where they can find more information about you and the work that you do. Oh, for sure. Uh, thanks so much. Um, my website is the best place, theworklady.com the work lady.com. I, nobody can spell McGinnis. <laughs> so I had to come up with something and I used to do a lot of office humor. So, uh, a lot more than I do now. So I thought, well, we'll come up with the work lady. So work lady, the work lady.com, um, is where you can find me and please send me an email. I'd love to hear from people. I, uh, I will respond back. I promise. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are almost out of time. So thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I just love you. You know that. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you taking time in your schedule to to do this interview with me. Yeah. Thank you for having me on and Thank you for all the great work you and hello gorgeous does for everyone around the country. It's, I'm just, uh, you, uh, you're my idol there, Kim. You're just, no. you're great. You're great. Well, I love, you. I love following you. Everyone here should get at least one other 
friend to subscribe to your podcast and check out Kim's Hello Gorgeous site and um, say hi to Kim. She's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If you have any questions or comments or would like to know more about the guests on our show or for more information about Hello Gorgeous, feel free to contact me at kbecker at hellogorgeous.org or visit our website at www.hellogorgeous.org. We invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download our mobile app. Thank you for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker. And until next time, stay gorgeous.